Pakistan's Eid al-Fitr celebration will align with the rest of the world on 10th April, as the Ruwaiti Hilal Committee confirmed the sighting of the Shawwal moon. The Central Moon Sighting Body convened atop the Federal Secretariat's Kosar Block in Islamabad, with simultaneous meetings held by zonal and district committees. Chaired by Maulana Abdul Khabir Azad, the meeting included members of the Ruwaiti Hilal Committee, alongside representatives from the Pakistan Meteorological Department, SUPARCO, and the Ministry of Science and Technology. Meanwhile, several countries, including Saudi Arabia, Qatar, UAE, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Australia, are set to mark Eid al-Fitr tomorrow, following the non-sighting of the crescent on Monday. As the global Muslim community prepares for festivities, Pakistan's alignment with the global Eid celebration underscores unity amidst diversity. Former Prime Minister Yosef Raza Gillani and PMLNS Seydal Khan Nasir on Tuesday were elected unopposed as the Senate Chairman and Deputy Chairman, respectively. That in all circumstances, that in all circumstances, I will do right. I do right to all manner of people. To all manner of people, according to law. According to with, law, without fear or favor. Without fear or favor, affection or ill will. Affection or ill will. May Allah Almighty. May Allah Almighty help and guide me. Help and guide me. Amin. Amin. Mubarak ho jiya. The two were elected during a session which also saw 41 newly elected senators being sworn in as members of the upper house of parliament amid a noisy protest by the PTI, which had boycotted the election. The PTI's contention, as stated by Senator Ali Zafar on the floor of the house, was that the session for electing the chairman and deputy chairman should be postponed until after Senate elections were held in Khyber Pakhtunakhwa. He then announced the PTI would not participate in the election for the top slots. خیبر پختون خواہ کا جو صوبہ ہے جو کہ پاکستان کا ایک لازم حصہ ہے اور بڑا اہم حصہ ہے اس کے سینیٹرز موجود نہیں ہیں ان کی غیر موجودگی میں چونکہ تشکیل نہیں ہو سکتی سینیٹ کی آرٹیکل 59 اور آرٹیکل 60 جس کا بھی آپ نے ذکر کیا اس کے مطابق یہ سینیٹ کا جو اجلاس ہو رہا ہے یہ ایک انکمپلیٹ نامکمل سینیٹ ہے اس لیے اس وقت کسی قسم کا چیئرمین اور نائب چیئرمین کا الیکشن انتخاب نہیں ہو سکتا Palestinians returning to their Khan Yunus homes after the Israeli army's withdrawal expressed shock at the scale of destruction. Meanwhile, Hamas is reviewing the latest ceasefire proposal presented by mediators in Egypt. However, it blasts Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's threat. stating that the invasion of Rafah already has a start date. In international developments, did Fotak moves ensu after Turkey issues an immediate export ban on Israel. Simultaneously, Israeli warplanes bomb homes in Gaza City's Zaytun neighborhood, causing dozens of casualties among the 153 Palestinians killed in the past 24 hours. The toll rises as the conflict persists. At least 33,360 Palestinians have been killed and 75,993 wounded in Israeli attacks on Gaza since 7 October. In a desperate bid to escape the wrath of swiftly melting snow, Russia and Kazakhstan have ordered the evacuation of over 100,000 people. Mighty rivers, swollen beyond their capacity, have unleashed the worst flooding seen in the region in over 70 years. Settlements in the Ural Mountains, Siberia, and Kazakhstan's riverine regions found themselves submerged. Rivers like the Ural and Tobol surged to historic highs within hours, breaching embankments and inundating cities. The Ural River burst through an embankment dam, flooding Orsk. In Orenburg, water levels neared critical thresholds, threatening catastrophic floods in the city of over half a million. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov warned of difficult days ahead. President Vladimir Putin engaged in talks with Kazakh President Qasem Jomart Tokayev, acknowledging the scale of the disaster that forced over 86,000 Kazakh citizens to flee. The brunt of the catastrophe was felt in regions bordering Russia, including Atiro, Aktobe, and Pavlodar. Anger simmered in Orsk as residents pleaded for aid amidst accusations of neglect. <laughs>